Welcome to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Joining me today is Dr. William Gradishar, Betsy Bramson Professor of Breast Oncology at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Dr. Gradishar, wonderful to have you here today. I'm glad to be here. I wanted to talk about abemocyclib. How will the results from trials with abemocyclib, which is, of course, a CDK4 and 6 inhibitor, with uh, positive results at ASCO compared to palbocyclib, and how are these drugs alike and different? Well, we have limited information right now. So palbo is available. Yeah. It's used not as monotherapy because it doesn't really have much single agent activity, but it's being used in combination with established endocrine therapy like aromatase inhibitors and fulvestrant, where it's clearly demonstrated to enhance the time until the disease progresses in a fairly dramatic way. Uh, it's different from a bemocyclib because palbo has to be given um, not con constantly. It's usually given, you know, with a week off out of every cycle. And you have to follow blood counts. It's, a, you know, one dose a day. A bemocyclib does have monotherapy activity. And really, the presentation that we heard at ASCO was meant to show us that if you were thinking about going on to chemotherapy in sort of a salvage situation, a drug like this may have equivalent activity to some of the chemotherapy options that you would use. So one way of interpreting the results is that it might delay the time until you take chemotherapy. But what the data actually demonstrated was that there's about a 20% response rate in hormone receptor positive disease as monotherapy. The drug is BID. It has different toxicities. So whereas Palbo is more of an effect on blood counts, specifically the white count. Um, abemocyclib doesn't really have that effect, but has some GI yes. problems, including loose stools. That problem seems to be easily controlled and short-lived, but I think we need more data. And what most people are really waiting for is the combination data. The Palbo trials were constructed in such a way that it was combined with endocrine therapy. There are similar trials with the bemocyclib that are not yet reported that are really very comparable to those trials in design. And we have, when we have those sort of indirect direct comparisons, because they're the same kind of drug combinations, then we'll get a better sense of the comparative efficacy of these two drugs. The other potential upside of a bemocyclib is it can get into the CSF. Yes. And as a result, there may be some potential for either decreasing the risk of getting brain metastases or conceivably treating them. But again, that's far ahead of what we know at this point. Yes. Are there ongoing clinical trials looking specifically at that? There are small trials that are really exploring that. And actually, they'll be able to look at the trials not yet reported to see what the incidence of brain metastases are in the two groups, those that got a bemocyclib and those that did not. And there might be a numerical difference. It wouldn't be definitive but it would offer some insight into whether or not that really does have the effect on CSF that we think it does. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. We truly appreciate your expertise and your perspective. My pleasure. For Practice Update, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafazula. Thank you for joining us today.